Sir Patrick Stewart said that on Star Wars over 30 years ago, but it's not actually science fiction, but a real theory that some astronomers are saying could prove the existence of aliens, but not just the existence of aliens, possibly 60 alien civilizations, 60. Now, astronomers have recently made a huge discovery that has split the scientific community on whether aliens actually exist or if it's just plain old astrophysics. This is called the Dyson Sphere, which Sir Patrick Stewart was talking about. And it is a hypothetical alien-made planet-sized structure that's built around a star so it can use its energy as a power source. Now, two new scientific papers detail the discovery of a total of 60 stars with the potential to have these power-emitting Dyson spheres, leading some to suggest that aliens could be living off of one or more of them. After all, there are 60, so the odds might be better than you think that we're not alone. Now, scientists say these 60 stars are emitting, are emitting way more infrared heat than a normal star, and one explanation is these are, in fact, Dyson spheres built by aliens. But how likely is that? Well, to answer that question, I'm joined right now by renowned theoretical physicist and author, Dr. Michio Kaku. Welcome, Dr. Kaku. Thank you so much for coming on. So you think these Dyson spheres are alien species that were, uh, that were built by alien species, I should say? Well, you can't rule it out. Uh, back in 1937, Olaf Stapleton and later Freeman Dyson said that the energy requirements of an advanced civilization is so great that perhaps they envelop the mother star with the sphere using 100% of that energy. Now, the star would then become black because all the radiation is absorbed by the sphere. So how would you know that you're looking at a Dyson sphere? Well, by the second law of thermodynamics, there's going to be waste heat generated. So even though the sphere is perfectly airtight, absorbs all the radiation, there's going to be leakage, leakage of infrared radiation and bingo. That's the telltale signature. If you can find infrared orbit, infrared light coming from one of these stars, it could be a, uh, it could be a Dyson sphere. However, once the paper was, was published, some people said, now, wait a minute, there are other sources of infrared radiation other than a Dyson sphere. For example, a leaky star, or a star in formation, or a star that has clouds, clouds covering it, could also generate an infrared signature. And so right now, it's a stalemate. Some people say, aha. This is proof that extraterrestrial civilizations do exist. Other people say, not so fast. Mm -hmm. It could be a counterfeit. It could be just a fluke that we have infrared radiation coming out. So that's where we are today, stuck. Well, let me, let me ask you this. What would it take for it to be more definitive that it's influenced by extraterrestrials? I get the split, but I think it's pretty miraculous we're detecting these in the first place. What would it take for us to have a little bit more leaning towards this might not be what we think it is? Well, we need more data because right now an infrared cloud from a dying star, an infrared cloud from a Dyson sphere look very similar. So we need more data to differentiate between the two. So we know, for example, that all Dyson spheres emit infrared radiation, but not all infrared radiators are Dyson spheres. It could be a fluke. It could be something masquerading as a Dyson sphere. And therefore, we have to be careful. Now, personally, I believe they're out there. But as Carl Sagan used to say, remarkable claims require remarkable proof. And so far, we don't yet have the smoking gun that would differentiate a real genuine Dyson sphere from a blip caused by a dust cloud. Well, doctor, I will tell you, you are not alone. And I don't mean that in the extraterrestrial sense. I am right there with you. I think there's, you know, there's more to explain than we just really know. So I will be on the lookout for these Dyson spheres. Um, I've heard about them before. Now we have a better understanding about what they are. Um, so we just need a little bit more data. But the fact that we were able to detect them, I think that's a really good start. Uh, Dr. Michio Kaku, thank you so much for coming on. And again, big fan of your work. I think you do a great job. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.